This gospel reading is one of my favorite miracles. There is so much, I think, depth in this. I'm not going to be able to go through all of it. Uh, but just key things. So if you watched, if you were here uh, for my last reflection, you know that I talked about this. And it's crazy. I didn't even know this was going to be the reading for this week. Last week, uh, we talked about Jesus uh, getting lost in the temple. And then he was, it talked about how he was obedient to his mother and father. And I talked about how there's that connection to this to this gospel reading, um, the, the wedding feast at Cana. And yeah, look at that. It's today's reading. <laughs> I'm going to go back to that same, same concept of Jesus' obedience to his mother. The part that I mentioned last week and I'll mention again here is when Mary approaches Jesus and says, they're out of wine. Uh, and Jesus says to her, woman, what is that to me? and to thee. My hour is not yet come. First of all, I guess Jesus didn't learn his lesson, right? To be obedient. Um, let's go address his mom and say, woman, what is that? <laughs> uh, I know what happened if I did that to my mom. Um, but I joke. So what I understand from that is uh, from uh, theologians and biblical scholars is that is an address of title woman um so it's a sign of respect as mary is the new eve um and that was the title given to eve right woman um and so it's an address to mary in that title in that regards in that respect and he says, what is that to me and to thee? Jesus, the new Adam. My hour is not yet come. So this is a moment, like I mentioned last week, where Jesus is like, if I perform this miracle, everything is set into motion. Uh, we know where this leads. We know where this ends. Like this is no going back from this. Um, because this is the first miracle. So Jesus' power uh, will be manifested here. And Mary says simply, do whatever he tells you. And I think that's significant for us. Um, and I think in reflecting on my life, I think that's kind of something that has always uh, been a draw uh, of me back to the faith is Mary. Um, you, normally, I will find that the moments that I struggle most in my faith is when I have, um, when I don't have as deep of a relationship with Mary. And usually that's my way back, is that I build my relationship with Mary again because it's that strengthening of that relationship with Mary. You do what she says here, which is to listen to Jesus. Um, she has that tender love of a mother that just softens your heart, makes it easier um, to be more obedient to Jesus. Um, who was obedient to his mother? That moment, I think it says so much about our faith. And uh, Jesus, in, in in that regard, is also calling us to that obedience uh, to our mother, that respect for our mother, Mother Mary, of course. What I find, I guess I keep doing this. I, I keep looking forward. <laughs> I think it's fitting that the first miracle happens at a wedding feast, right? This speaks a lot about the importance of marriage and the significance of it. As, as Catholics, we know that marriage is our clearest picture, our clearest image of the marriage of heaven and earth, right? God and his church. 
they they reflect one another and they teach us uh, about one another and so I find it significant because in the passion um, Jesus death bridges that gap between heaven and earth it opens the gates uh, to heaven for us to enter and his final words on the cross are consumatum est it is consummated it is finished and in marriage that is the the, the bestowing of the sacrament happens in the consummation of the marriage it's actually bestowed upon by the spouses to one another um so i think it's fitting that here we have the start of jesus miracles at the wedding feast at cana it ends in the passion on the cross well there was the resurrection but it is the marriage of heaven and earth so I just found that interesting and something to reflect upon. And I could be wrong here. I'll put that caveat here. Uh, one thing that stood out to me too is the six jars of water, right? Six is not the complete number in the imagery of the Bible. Seven isn't? No, eight is. Maybe I'm wrong. Again, just my thoughts, reflections, <laughs> things that going through my head that I'll have to pray about. So don't take everything I say as gospel. I'm not writing a gospel, I'm just reflecting on it. Um, but that seventh cup, right, is... Actually, maybe it is. Maybe that's the imagery. Here. I'm just going with the thought here. Um, so somebody, if you're an expert, a uh, biblical scholar, and you're seeing this somehow, leave a, leave a comment below and explain to me. Or if you know from biblical experts uh comment below and let me know uh what is correct here but seventh cup right do we have the, the the last supper before the passion and then it's the eighth cup the perfection the same the one we celebrate at mass is that the eighth it's the fulfillment of it but the but the, the cup we drink at mass is the same cup theologically because mass happens outside of time and space time outside of time not time and space outside of time oh, i'm getting way over my head <laughs> we'll back up we'll back up i have to think about that read, read more about that and do research that is something i'm sure biblical scholars have gone into those are the, the key takeaways I think I have from here that I want to talk about today. Uh, we'll stop there. So, if you have any thoughts, uh, like I said, if you know the correct information of the stuff that I was just pondering on, put it in the comments below. Let me know. Correct me. I'd like to learn. I'm going to look into that more. Um, if you like this video, uh, yeah, make sure to like it. Uh, comment below if you have your own reflections and thoughts and uh, subscribe to the channel and uh hit the notification bell so you, you can get notifications about these when they get up when they get uploaded um till then i'll see you next time